Well, I'm out today. It's beautiful today. The birds are singing, it's mild, and I'm down on a lake that I haven't fished for 10 years. Now, when I used to fish here, the pike fishing wasn't too bad, but the pike weren't particularly big. But I have heard that in the 10 years since, they've grown a bit and, and they're in really nice condition. So I'm gonna try and catch a couple today and take a look at them. I'm gonna use a pretty straightforward approach. The sort of approach I would use on any new still water. I'm gonna use floats, because I love watching floats, but it, floats are a great way of exploring the water. I'm gonna use a float fish dead bait on the one rod, cast it out, and then I'm gonna keep twitching it back, which you can do easily with a float, and then just hope something grabs it. If it doesn't, I'm fishing the bait in new positions all the time. The other rod I'm gonna put on my old favorite kebab rig. Now, I really rate this rig, and. I just love it because you chop the fish up and you put it on a plastic pin and it's absolutely oozy with blood and juices and it's got to attract pike and it does and I've caught lots of fish on it. But I'm going to fish that one static and the reason for that is that around that area where I'm putting it I'm going to chop up some more little bits of fish and put sort of a ground bait around it so there's a real fishy stink in that area and hopefully that will be drawing pike in while the other rod I'm drawing the pike towards me by moving it. So the baits are out. Let's see what happens. Well, I'm only down here for a short session. I haven't got too long to fish. So I want to make sure I choose the right swim. I know a bit about this lake. To the left, it's getting deeper and to the right, it's getting shallower. So I've chosen somewhere between the deep and the shallow water because around spawning time, I don't know whether the pike are still in the winter quarters or whether they've gone to the shallow weedy water to look for somewhere to spawn. So I'm hedging my bets really, I'm halfway in between. But my chances are restricted anyway because there's a few carp anglers on the water and they've, they've chosen the shallow water so I can't really go up there and disturb them. So I'm just hoping there's pike now moving between the two parts of the lake and uh, hopefully they'll pick up on the scent of my dead bait. We'll see. Well when I'm approaching a new swim I like to fish the margin first because if you hook a fish right out there and bring it back through the margin you're going to disturb the fish in front of you so I always try and catch them first. Just been setting my float up and I've actually had a small pike snatch at the bait so I know there's definitely one close in. I'm just going to drop a bait in and see if I can tease it into taking it. He's got it. He's got it. Well, the pike's grabbed my bait right under the rod tip. Oh, he's let it go. Let it go. It's going to be a game of cat and mouse this, I think. Well, I saw it grab the bait, but it, it's let it go. But, you know, around spawning time, pike do some odd things. Especially the females. <laughs> but that's women for you, when they're pregnant. <laughs> They're unpredictable. I'm going to fish the kebab rig quite close in, just at the end of this bush. But before doing so, I'm going to bait the area up with some chopped sardine. This is just old stuff that I took home from a previous session. Nothing gets wasted in my fishing. going to create a real smell in that area and any pike working their way past they're going to pick up on that. Well I'm going to put the kebab rig out but I'm not going to cast it too far because any bits of fish I get I want to chop them up and throw them around it for a bit of ground bait. Well, 
while there's a lot more weed on the bottom than I thought and that's making twitching the bait back difficult really I'm just picking up weed so the next trick I'm going to try is to suspend the bait I'm going to try and gauge for it to be a foot two feet off bottom so it's not snagging the weed and then it should come back clean towards me in full view of the pike so let's see how that goes Nothing's taken the twitched bait, but I've just noticed something's picked the kebab up. <laughs> I'm told no one's ever used a kebab rig here before, so <laughs> this is a first. And I've hooked it. I've got to say, first impressions, it feels like a reasonable fish. Oh, that's not too bad. Well, that didn't put up much of a fight. <laughs> I think it was a sh quite shocked picking up a bait like that and getting hooked. <laughs> well, that's the first. The first fish on this lake on a kebab rig, and it was out there five minutes, maybe. Well, typically of a fish hooked on a kebab, it's only in the scissors there. And there it is. Still got the kebab. I can get another fish on that probably. And there's the beauty that took it. Well, this is my first fish from this lake for many, many years. And uh, I must say they are in better condition than they used to be. I think the water's a bit clearer nowadays. Looking at this one, it, uh, it may have already spawned because there's just uh, like a white putty coming out the vent, which is usually a sign it's been feeding and that's, uh, that's what the fish looks like when it comes out the other end. So maybe spawning's over, maybe we'll get another one, we'll see. Take one last look at her before she goes back. Put her back in amongst the roach and cause havoc. that's cold. Well I've got my bait back, saved a bit of money <laughs> and I'm going to put it back on the same spot because often where there's one pike there's another. Well at some stage today I'm going to be using my old favourite kebab rig and it's pretty straightforward really all you need is a one hook trace, that's a size four. That's the size I use for the kebab. Then you need the pin, which you pierce chunks of fish onto. And then what you're going to do, once you've got some fish on that pin, is hook it onto one of the points and retain it with one of these bait flags. So let's see that in practice. That's the bait I'm going to use. Now, this is an, an old tatty one that's been in my box, uh, been refrozen a couple of times. Most of you would throw that away, but I'm going to make good use of that. So, I'm going to cut this into chunks, not too big, not too small. But you'll see as I'm cutting them, the pieces are getting progressively smaller. 
and you'll see the reason for that when we put them on the pin. Because what we don't want to happen is for the bait to mask the hook so that you don't get an effective strike. So putting the big chunk on first, the one furthest away from the hook, then another fairly big chunk. I mean, as you can see, it's a real messy business, and, but that's what you want. You want all this blood and juice dripping off the bait because that's what's going to attract the pike. And I'm going to keep putting pieces on, they're getting smaller and smaller. Probably squeeze another one or two on. And right at the end where I'm going to put the hook, I'll put the smallest piece on. So the bait size is tapered away from the hook. And as I said before, all I need to do now is put one of the points through the hole in the end of the pin and to keep it on, just put one of these bait flags. And that's it, ready to cast. Absolutely dripping with juices and oils. Uh, uh, that's gonna produce an incredible scent trail and I'm a real believer in scent trails. This scent trail will move away from the bait throughout the water and any pike in the region will pick up on it and move in towards it. So that's ready to cast. And uh, maybe I should just show you how, how the hooking takes place. The pike picks up the bait. And because you've tapered the fish size off towards the end of the hook, normally the hook pulls into the scissors. And of course, there's only one hook there. It's a big bait, I mean, that's a whole sardine, but, but you're fishing it with one hook. And um, it's often, as often as not, very easy to unhook. Just one treble, just take it out of the scissors, and quite often you get the bait back as well, so it's real economy there. Well, I've had that sardine out on the bottom for a little while now. I've twitched it a few times, and I've not had any interest. So I'm, I'm going to twitch it back in now. And when I've done so, I'll get the rig out of the water and show you how I've made it up. It's important if you can, when you're twitching it back, to bring it right up to the rod tip. Very often, that's when you'll get the hit. The pike will come right to the edge. So it is important to keep as quiet as you can and, and keep as concealed as you can. And I'm always looking a couple of metres behind in clear water to see if anything's following. Well, <laughs> on this occasion nothing's following, so let's take a look at the rig. Well, I've got the float fish dead bait rig out of the water now and I'll quickly run through it for you. First thing you thread onto your line is a stop, one of these rubber adjustable stops. Slide that up and down to vary the depth that you're fishing. Then you'll want a bead. Any old bead will do as long as uh, it doesn't go over the stop. This one's off my grandmother's necklace. <laughs> She won't miss it, she's dead now. <laughs> anyway, and then you put a float on. And uh, you've got a choice of floats. I like this one, this pencil type. It's a, a non-cocking float because it gives me the option of suspending a bait. And I know the bait's suspended because it stands up in the water. When the bait's on the bottom, it'll lie flat. But you can, you know, you can use any other floats. It, it doesn't have to be that float. And then right down the, the business end, we've got the trace. I'm using minimum weight today. This is only, I'm not sure what this is, about eight grams, 10 grams. Um, because there is weed down there and I don't want this weight to pull the bait down into the weed. I just want it to be enough to tighten up to. If I was on a hard bottom, I could probably get away with putting a bigger weight on. Then I've got a buffer bead for the weight to slide against so that it doesn't damage the clip and swivel. 
And I say this is one of the quick change weights. If I decided I wanted to put a heavier weight on, uh, I, I can quickly take off the rubber sleeve, put the heavier weight on, sleeve back on, and I'm fishing with a heavier weight. And at the end of the main line, I've tied a size seven clip, quick change clip, and uh, these are just so easy to use. You can just take a trace off in seconds, put a new one back on in seconds. And that's a standard trace with ready-made trace with two size six trebles. And, and there's the bait I've been using, but as you can see, it's got in a bit of a mess. And I expect a lot of pike anglers would just throw that away. But you know, that's cost you money. What I will do is cut it into chunks and I'll use it on my kebab rig. And um, it's made buying bait very economical. So I'm gonna put something different on now. I've got some really nice smelts. I'm gonna put a smelt on and uh, I'm going to try casting long range now. We've had a fish close in, but I think we want to explore further out now. And I'm going to put a nice smelt on and try casting to a few spots, see if I can find another pike. Right, let's go. Well, I've explored the water close in with the kebab rig and by twitching a dead bait off bottom. And it's produced a pike and I'm pleased about that. But I think I've probably outstayed my welcome now. And I've got to start fishing further afield. So I've got a really nice smelt on here, absolutely oozing with juices and oils. And I'm gonna get this one out a little bit further. I'm gonna lay it on the bottom and just see what happens. Just give the pike time to pick up on the scent. So that, so that the bait doesn't tangle, I tend to tighten up a little bit as it's sinking so that everything drops down to the bottom in a straight line. And also I think that bit of movement, if there's a pike in the area, that's going to entice you to come and have a look. Right, put the line in the clip and I'll have a look what I'm going to do on the other rod. Well, I'm bringing the kebab in, and you wouldn't think it's a good rig for twitching, but um, it's not the best, but now and again, I will grab it on the way in. It's always worth doing it carefully and gently. Now, that's still in great condition, so do you know, I think I'm going to fish this one further out as well. And again, as the rig sinks, I'm just tightening just to keep everything in a straight line so that the hook doesn't tangle around the main line. Right, got two baits fishing nicely. Time to sit down and think about what's happened. Well, it looks like that ground bait in there on the edge is working because I put a smelt over my ground bait and I've got to run within a couple of minutes. I might have the littlest pike in the lake here. I don't really care. It's, it's just great to get a run. Just great to see that float go. Oh. 
it really is a little one. <laughs> Well, that's not too badly hooked. Can reach the bottom hook quite easily. Let's put that one out of the way. Just find the best way to turn the top treble. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> But you know, I don't despise catching these because these are the monsters of tomorrow. Well, I don't know whether this is a male or a female, but if it's a female, this could be a 20 pounder of tomorrow. Lovely pike. Oh, <laughs> oh that was fun. Well, all the action has been down the edge over the ground baited area. And I may have just been unlucky picking up the small pike. Let's see if there's a big one amongst them. I'm gonna put a much bigger bait on. This is a pollen and uh, I can tell you pike love pollen. Let's give it a go. Well, I'm gonna talk about bait now. And first of all, I'm going to show you the selection of baits I've brought for the day. Now, this is a typical selection of baits that I'm confident with. There's lots and lots of other baits that you, you can get, but these are the ones that I have most of the time. You may think this hard, but I'm going to talk about one that isn't actually there first. One of my all-time favourites is lamprey, but you know they are very, very expensive. If you can afford them and you use them, you've got an edge because they're a really great bait. But after lamprey, my next favourite would be the smelt. I mean, the smelt, oh, I could sniff these all day. They've got a wonderful smell and pike absolutely love them. And, and I always think if I can't catch on a smelt, I won't catch at all. Then there's a couple of old favourites here. Mackerel. These Joey mackerel are brilliant. Great pike baits, the right size. But you can get a bigger one and you can cut it in half and use a half bait. Then you've got pollen. This is actually a coarse fish, a type of coarse fish. And uh, when I started fishing, these weren't around. These have come, come, come into the uh, market in the last 20, 30 years. And uh, they've proved to be a really good bait for pike. So if I can't get coarse fish baits and I want coarse fish, I'll go and buy some pollen. And then, Cheap and cheerful is the sardine. Now people can't get on with sardine because they're soft and they cast off the hook, and that is true. But if you're careful for close and medium range fishing, you can use them. And I'll let you know, uh, know a little secret now. Do you know for the last five seasons, all I've used is sardines. And the reason is I'm not fishing too far out. I'm fishing close to medium range, but they're so cheap. They're the cheapest bait around very easily available and uh, I just buy mine from the supermarket and uh, if you hook them carefully you can get several casts out of them but I found the pike absolutely love sardines so there you are sardines for close to medium range fishing pollen a big bait big heavy bait you can cast a long way mackerel really streamlined you can cast them a long way and smelts oh they're just so smelly and attractive pike love them you know, in the tackle shops there's, and on the supermarket shelves, there's so many different baits to choose from. And if I was you, I would, I would just experiment, experiment with them all. But one last thing I would say is, try and get your bait size right. Six to seven inches is about the right size for rigging up. Because when you get a run, a bait of that size, you can strike straight away. If you put a really big bait on, you, you're either going to miss the bite because it hasn't got the hooks in its mouth um, or it can throw a big bait out of its mouth. So there it is, four lovely baits that I use a lot, the perfect size. And if you start with them, you're not gonna go far wrong.
Well, when you're starting pike fishing, your, your biggest investment is going to be in your rods and your reels and the line. Uh, so you've got to choose wisely, really. Now, the rods for bank fishing, the industry standard seems to have settled at 12 foot, and I think that's a good length for bank fishing. But the test curve is the thing you've got to get right. You'll see them offered generally from two and three quarter test through to about three and a quarter test. Now, how do you choose? Well, for me, it's all to do with the size of bait I'm casting out most of the time. Most of the time, I'm using what I'd call average size baits and probably seven or eight inches long, just a bit longer than my hand as a rule of uh, thumb. And a three pound test curve rod seems to be fine for casting out baits like that. But if I was using heavier baits, I'd probably be overloading that rod, so I'd, I'd go for a three and a quarter if I was using bigger baits and trying to cast them a long way. If I'm using smaller baits and fishing closer range, I'd only need a two and three quarter test curve rod. And um, I think that would be fine for small rivers, small pits and drains, that sort of thing. With, with reels, I'm not so fussy. Uh, an eight, 9,000 size reel is perfect to match any of the rods I've mentioned. And you want one really that holds a lot of line and one probably with a, quite a big diameter spool so the line flows off easily. Now, I like to lo load my reels nowadays with a braided line. I used to use mono, and mono's okay. If I did use it for pike fishing, I'd opt for 20 pound braking strain, and that's gonna ensure that I don't leave any traces out there. And if I get caught on snags, I'm probably gonna get the rigs back. But if you want belt and braces and you wanna do the job properly, I would go for a braided main line. And I'm gonna say 50 pound braking strain, and you may think, wow, that's that's ridiculously heavy, but you know, modern braids are so thin, so small in the diameter, um, 50 pound braking strain looks to me about the equivalent of about 15 to 20 pound mono. And the great thing about braid is, <laughs> you're not gonna break it. I, I defy anybody in normal fishing circumstances to break 50 pound braid. And, and that means that you're not gonna be breaking on fish, leaving rigs in fish, and if you snag on the bottom, you're not gonna leave the bait out there, you won't break. If you pull for a break, you'll get your hooks back. They may straighten out, but you'll get them back. So there's a lot of advantages to braid, and the other one I must mention is the knot. Do you know, if you tie a five-turn grinner with braid and just pull it tight gently, that's all you have to do. It's so simple to do, even when your hands are cold. And uh, the great thing is, there's no pulling with your teeth and pulling hard. When you hook the fish, it, it only tends to lock it even more. It's simple to tie, and it just it just pulls together nicely, snip it off, and you've got a, a really secure, safe knot there. Strong knot. So, as I say, that's your biggest investment in your uh, pike fishing, rods, reels, and line. And if I was you, I'd really think about what you're buying, make sure you get the right, the right equipment for the sort of fishing you're doing, the places you're fishing, the size of bait you're using. And uh, you know, when you've got the right equipment, I think you'll enjoy your fishing a lot more. Well, I've decided to move to another swim. Apart from the two I've had, it seems pretty devoid of any other pike. I've tried every trick I know so let's see if there's any pike in this one. Well, it's only been a short session and to be honest, it, fish wise, it hasn't been particularly good, but the idea of this session wasn't really to see me catch fish. It was to show you some of the methods and rigs I use when I'm trying to catch pike. And I know these methods work. They won't work every day. I can't guarantee you're gonna catch fish, but I can tell you one thing. If you're fishing in this way, you are fishing right. You will get bites on the right day and you will land your fish safely. So don't expect to catch every day. You know, I'm just gonna enjoy sitting here now for an hour and finishing off. Um, but you know, in the knowledge that I'm fishing correctly, I'm fishing with strong tackle. And if I do get one, I'm gonna make a good job of landing it. So, hope you've learned something from this and uh, maybe see you again another time. 
Well, I've just had one more cast in the pre-bait swim. I've thrown a bit more bait in and something's picked up me, me smelt. Let's hope it's a good one. Well, all I can say is I've, I've told you I was fishing right. I was confident I was fishing right and, uh, and I think that goes to prove it. If I could spend a bit more time here, which I can't, I'm sure I'd catch quite a few more fish. Well, there it is. I'm sure it's not the biggest pike in the lake, but Tell you what, when that float slid away, it was absolute magic to me. Lovely pike. Well, that's a great ending, really. All I can say is that, you know, once you're happy that you're using good methods, good tackle, you just need faith in yourself and you need to persevere. And then hopefully it comes right.